Hello and thanks for joining us. This is the signature 30 minutes. I am Oboman Marvelous. In the headline, Kirby State Governor Abubakar Bakudu visits Fulani Hamlets, directs immediate provision of water supply. The People's Democratic Party has called for professionalism in the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission under Bauer's watch. Niger State Government advises parents not to stop their children from going to school. And now the details. As part of efforts to better the lives of people at the rural communities, the KB State Governor, Senator Abubakar Atiku, has directed the immediate sinking of boreholes at some Fulani hamlets in Bonza local government area. Governor Bagudu paid on scheduled visits to Ruga Bambala. Ruga Belo and Tonga Risku hamlets, where he discovered that their boreholes have stopped functioning. Residents of the community recounting their plight told the governor that the existing boreholes in their hamlets were not functional and they needed a generator to service it. The head of the community, Belo Hakimi, and one aged woman, Fatimo Hajo, told Governor Bagudu that people in the area always trek a long distance in search of water. Reacting to their plight, the governor directed the immediate repairs of the boreholes in the affected hamlets, stressing that the state government was ready to sink boreholes for them. He assured them that the officials from the Ministry of Water Resources would soon mobilize to site to begin work immediately. The governor charged them to live in peace with one another and endeavor to send their children to schools. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has advised the new chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdurashid Bawa, to re-engineer and restore professionalism in the anti-graft agency. The party, in a statement signed by its National Publicity Secretary, Kola Olobodion, on Sunday in Abuja urged Bawa to avoid the pitfalls of his immediate predecessors. Allah Bodinyo advised him to resist all partisan pressures to use the agency as a tool for political persecution, harassment of dissenting voices, settling of personal scores as well as personal enrichment. He said that such tendencies eroded professionalism in the EFCC, compromised its activities and diminished the public confidence with regard to fairness impartiality and transparency in the handling of cases. The PDP noted that for the first time, the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is drawn from the pool of trained investigators of the commission, and Nigerians expect the new chairman to bring the benefits of his training to bear by sanitizing the system and restoring professionalism in line with international best practices. For some time now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has been accused of compromising on the war against corruption. With the appointment of 40-year-old Abdurashid Bawa as the new EFCC boss, Nigerians are eager to know if his administration would restore the integrity of the anti-graft agency. Signature TV correspondent Chibeze Obi went to the streets of Abuja to get the comments from Nigerians. That as for be a youth, it is very much in order. They themselves, the president, what, 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 how old was he when he was Nigerian's uh, governor before and the president? So it's good to appoint the youth, but I do not advocate that it should be all youth or all adult. Uh, I don't know how old were they in Germany from before they rule. So whether you are old or young, in America, what, what matters is those who are qualified, let them handle position of authority in Nigeria. Uh, Abdul Rashid Bawa want to want to just have hope that being a young man with different ideology thinking more for the, the 21st century as opposed to thinking for the the older centuries uh, he'll probably do a better job yeah well actually that is what all of us expected of him because we are all been clamoring that they should give youth privilege and it's an opportunity for him to show that we the youth we are ready for the the change so it shouldn't be compromised 
you understand we expect him to perform optimally use a strategy you know that will stop all these cabal that hinder the process of ESCC activities are you getting it now and i'm very i'm, I'm urging the president as well Lord, to give him a, a room to perform his duty we believe in him he will perform and he will deliver as youth case may be because we are the future and the future begins now there is no there's no future without today so it's an opportunity for him to show all these cabals that we are ready to bring the change that is necessary for development of nigeria in time of corruptions we are ready to tame it i expected bauer to perform optimally confirmation of uh, bauer uh, as a EFC boss yesterday but i was so happy to you to be there but the advice I want to advise the young man, Yosaba, so make no, make no allow the all those cabas to, to rule him. Make, make no, make, make no turn his in integrity. So, so make it maintain, make it this in anything you want to do, make it do and make it take it seriously and do it as a youth. Archbishop of Enugu Ecclesiastical Province, Emmanuel Chukuma, has labeled the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari as the worst in the history of Nigeria in terms of fighting corruption and insecurity. Chikuma in an interview in Enugu claimed that the president pays lip service to insecurity while pandering to ethnic and selective tendencies. The prelate did not spare the former service chiefs who were recently confirmed ambassadors by the Senate. He alleged they were corrupt people that should have been probed for the huge sums of money that passed under them without results. He also faulted the government supported negotiation between Sheikh Gumi and bandits, saying they should instead be dealt with decisively for bringing trouble to Nigerians. He advised the new service chiefs not to subscribe to negotiation with bandits, urging them to be decisive in their fight against insurgency. Chief Emmanuel Iwanyawo, an elder statesman, has warned that Nigeria's security problem has gone beyond experimenting as to who heads the various security agencies, calling on government to expedite action to arrest the situation. Iwanyawo, who spoke in Oweri on Sunday against the backdrop of recent appointment of new service chiefs, pointed out that except government changes its tactics, it can never subdue Boko Haram and bandits who are increasingly terrorizing the country. He said that changing service chiefs will not bring any miracle because Boko Haram has infiltrated most communities, convincing residents that they can provide their needs where government has failed. Iwanya said that the country needs to be completely restructured in the area of security, economy and governance. The other statesman who pointed out that Nigeria should have federal, state and local government police condemned the northern governors for blaming southeast governors and their leaders as problems behind insecurity in Nigeria. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAMB and heads of various tertiary institutions in the country have agreed to conclude all 2020-2021 admissions by June 15, 2021. In a statement signed by its head of media and publicity, Dr. Fabian Benjamin in Abuja, JAMB said that the public universities will conclude admissions a month ahead of private institutions, polytechnics and colleges of education. According to JAM, it reached an agreement with heads of institutions at a virtual meeting on Wednesday, February 24th, during which issues concerning admission processes were discussed. The board said that the meeting was aimed at knowing the level the institutions had reached on the 2020-2021 admission scale. JAM added that the essence of the interactive session was to forestall an endless admission regime generated by disruptions to daily life occasioned especially by the COVID-19 pandemic. It said that the meeting was also to enable the board to put necessary machineries in place for the 2021-2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination and Direct Entry Registration. The statement says only 30% of institutions have commenced admissions into the 2020-2021 academic section.
The Sokoto State Acting Commander of the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, Bamidele Shegun, says it has arrested a 36 year old suspected transborder drug trafficker in Kem Timothy, alias Walu Awudu. He was apprehended while trying to cross the Algeria through Niger Republic with 62 wraps of substance suspected to be cocaine weighing 1.550 kg and with an estimated street value of about 1 billion naira. According to a statement by the agency's director of media and advocacy, Femi Baba Femi, on Sunday the suspect was intercepted on a motorcycle around the baggage area of the Lela border while trying to cross the Niger Republic en route to Algeria where he resides. The NDLUEA said the illicit drug was neatly concealed inside bottles of yogurt and also found with an ECOWAS passport with different names written as Walu Awudu, but he gave his real name as Nkem Timote. He said his men had commenced investigation to uh, unravel Timote's sponsors and other members of the transborder drug cartel. Meanwhile, the Adamawa State Command of the Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement Agency has also arrested one Uma Mohammed with 82 blocks of compressed cannabis sativa weighing 70 kg at the Lafia Lomond area of the state. The chairman of NDLUEA, Brigadier General Buba Marwa, retired, commended the two commands and charged them to remain vigilant and ensure that no illicit drug passed through their areas of responsibility. The Niger state government has advised parents not to allow the abduction of students in the state to discourage them from sending their children to school. This was stated by the Commissioner of Education, Jibrin Salihu, while handling over the released students who were abducted from Government Science College, Kagara, to their relatives in Mina, the state capital. Salihu also disclosed that the state has promised to secure all its schools from all criminal elements, to allow students and pupils to pursue their education. The commissioner who spoke on behalf of Governor Abubakar Sani Bello said that plans were already on ground to make sure that schools are safe in the state, especially the boarding schools. The commissioner also said that arrangements have commenced to allow the SS3 students to write their final examination. Professor of Virology Oyewale Tomori says government officials should be among the first to take the COVID-19 vaccines when it arrives in Nigeria. Tomori says such a move would convince Nigerians about the safety of the vaccines, which are expected to arrive on Monday. He said this while speaking in an interview with newsmen on Monday. Tomori said once the leaders have been vaccinated, people will have confidence in the vaccines. He added that apart from the health workers, Nigerian political leaders need to come out openly and take the vaccine. The Lagos state government has further extended the work from home directive to civil servants on salary grade levels 12 and below. A statement issued by the head of service, Hakim Muri Okunola, said it was in a bid to further stem the spread of COVID-19 within the public and service order stakeholders. He expressed the government's delight that measures put in place to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the state has resulted in a steady decline in the number of recorded cases in the preceding weeks. Muru Okinola maintained that in order to sustain the success so far recorded, Governor Babajide Sawonlu has reviewed the directive to all public servants on salary grade levels 12 and below for four weeks, with effect from Monday 1st to Friday 26th March 2021. The Lagos state has witnessed a decline in the number of infections in the recent weeks due to the government's regular updates on preventive measures as well as public enlightenment campaigns to create about awareness to measure the stem of the spread of the deadly virus. And now moving over to the foreign scene. A woman in Sri Lanka who caned a nine-year-old girl claiming it would drive out evil spirits has been arrested together with her accomplice after the child died of the injuries caused. 
The woman claiming to have specialized in witchcraft had promised to read the girl who lives in Biangama, a 33 kilometer east of Colombo, of evil spirits with the help of the girl's mother. The police said the disease was beaten at different times on three consecutive days. The child died on Sunday due to damages to her internal organs. The use of witchcraft continues in Sri Lanka as people believe it may provide relief from various ailments, help solve family disputes, land and financial issues. India on Monday expanded its COVID-19 vaccination campaign to cover people over 60 years of age as it hopes to address a spike in infections as well as vaccine caution among people. Prime Minister Narendra Modi took the job at a Delhi government hospital, becoming the first beneficiary of the vaccinations. The country began inoculating its 1.3 billion population from January 16 in what it is the world's largest vaccination program. It planned to vaccinate 30 million frontline workers and healthcare staff initially but has struggled only to manage 14.3 million shots so far. Registrations for people over 60 and those over 45 with multiple medical conditions opened on Monday morning on a government website and application, with vaccinations which began on Monday afternoon. India has reported more than 11 million cases of COVID-19 infections so far, second only to the United States. The Indian government said that the jobs at government facilities will be free while private hospitals can charge up to 250 rupees, that's $3.4 dollars for one shot of the vaccine. Before we end the news, another look at our major stories. KB State Governor Abubakar Atiku has directed the immediate sinking of boreholes in some Fulani hamlets in Bonza local government area. The People's Democratic Party has advised the new chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, to restore professionalism in the anti-graft agency. Niger State Government has advised parents not to allow the abduction of students in the state to discourage them from sending their children to school. Please do well to stay safe, maintain physical and social distance, and wear your nose marks while going about your daily activities. And that's the signature 30 minutes. On behalf of my producer, Chibweze Obi, I am Obomano Marvelous. Thanks for watching.